Hey there, sales managers, directors of sales, executive vice presidents of sales and marketing, chief marketing officers, chief revenue officers. Bill Shaka here. Welcome to another edition of Crush Your Company's Quota. Welcome to an absolutely glorious morning in Tamarindo, Costa Rica. It is not quite 6 a.m. here. And uh, it is absolutely stymieing. Uh, it's cool. There's a nice breeze. There's a little fog in the background. Just a great day to be alive. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? Bad times don't last, but neither do good times. As sales managers, we need to be able to balance the difference between depression and arrogance and this is something that we should be thinking about uh, when uh, sales people are in a slump huh. how many times have you been in a slump when you were in the field I know the few times that I've been in a slump fortunately fortunately thank God it wasn't that often but uh, boy when it happened it was a uh, it was a terrible situation it just seemed as though Everybody I tried to call didn't want to talk to me. Uh, everybody I went to see they didn't have any interest. And uh, it was, uh, it, 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 you know, when, when you drive especially, you have a lot of windshield time or you're by yourself. And salespeople are the consummate people persons. But we spend a lot of time alone. Okay, I mean, we are in the car driving from appointment to appointment. Sometimes those drives could be hours. Sometimes we're in a plane. We're surrounded by people, but we're alone. And we have time to think. And a lot of times that thinking process, well, I hate to say it, but it kind of turns negative. When things are not going well, we start thinking, hmm, I'm not going to hit my plan this month. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I have a plan to hit the plan for the quarter. I'm going to get fired. They're not going to keep me. They're not going to keep paying me this salary. What am I going to do? I have a family to support. I have a mortgage to pay. I got two houses or two cars that I need to uh, uh, pay. Well, maybe we can get rid of one car. We can always take the kids out of private school, put them in public school. Uh, that's Our public school sucks. I'm probably going to have to move if we want to put our kids in public school. You see what's going on? And all of a sudden, we've got <clears throat> this, this process that I like to call cascading where one negative thought leads to another negative thought to another negative thought so you're in a slump the slump means you're going to get fired being fired means you're not going to have money not having money means you're going to have to alter your family life and this process continues <clears throat> the other side of it is when things are going well and you know i i've hit some times like this too and i, I have fallen into the arrogance trap uh fortunately that does not happen anymore uh, it, uh, it, it happens with a lot of, um, uh, basically sales reps that are finally coming into their own, but it's the type of thing where, you know, you, you, you are expecting to hit 110% of plan for the month and lo and behold, you're 140% of plan and you have so much spillover that the first week of the month of the new month, you're already at 100% of plan. So the next three weeks are gravy. I mean, you're, you're out there picking a low hanging fruit. And the end result is that you've got another great month. And maybe you've got another great month that leads out to a stellar quarter. You're, you know, you, you're one of your salespeople are the salespeople of the month, maybe for the division, maybe for the company, depending on how many sales reps uh, you, uh, you have, etc. Uh, and they're, they're strutting around like a peacock and they're talking about maybe now it's time to look at becoming a sales manager, even though they're... They're three years devoid of the necessary experience for that. They're starting to get cocky. They're starting to get arrogant. In both situations, sales managers, you need to coach your salespeople through the understanding that bad times never last forever, but neither do good times. What we are looking to do is coach our salespeople into consistency when there are are peaks we ride them when there are valleys we work through them but consistency is the answer to making sure that our salespeople stay on track now there's a delicate balance here 
when our salespeople are riding high, we can't say things in coaching situations that make it look demotivational. You know, so we can't say things like, well, you know, that's good. You're riding on top of the world, but it's not going to last. Well, wait a minute. Wait, you can't say that. By the same token, if somebody's down in the dumps, you know, you can't say, ah, that's all right. We'll let you go another month before we fire you, even if you're kidding. Okay, so so you you have to balance good times and bad times, arrogance and depression, with proper coaching techniques that are going to lead not to not to uh, elevate their performance or de-escalate their performance, depending on where they are, but to show consistency. The more consistent your coaching is the more consistent your salespeople drive toward quota will be and the more that the two of you will partner to crush the company's quota. Bill Shaka, thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you in the next edition of Crush Your Company's Quota.